Uh, mate, cheers. How's it going? Cheers, Brett. Got my protein water. Just been to the gym. You know how it is. Monday morning, work out, go live. It's a great schedule. Protein and water. I don't think they're supposed to mix, are they? I don't, I don't know. They're, they're kind of tasty. Um, it's yeah, it's not much protein. It's only 10 grams, but it's like sparkling water with 10 grams of protein. Oh, they're putting protein in everything these days, eh? People love it, you know. It's the gym, the gym culture just loves protein, everything. Yeah, <laughs> mate. Speaking of everything, is it, is this going to be the year of Leon Marchand? What's going on here? This guy's swimming everything and just destroying everything. It's just, it's just mind boggling how good he is. Um, I'm really interested to see how he drops come NCAA's because I I don't doubt he's going to drop, and you know. He's only a second off like the all-time fastest 100-yard backstroke at this point. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, drops could mean anything. And I, I don't know, like, I guess he's probably going to end up just swimming like whatever ASU need him to swim. So he might not even swim his best events. He's going to – he can pick up the gaps. He can do the relays. He's – he's yeah, he's the real deal, eh? Mate, he dropped a 407 in a 500 free on the weekend just in a dual meet as well. Oh, God. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he really is the the real deal. Like, he can do yards, he can do long course meters, he can do every single stroke, which kind of makes sense why he's so good at 400 IM because he's he's not got a weak stroke. He's had the best breast stroke we've ever seen on a medley, and now he's doing world class backstroke times, and at the same time can go well 407, which is 0.8 off the best ever 500 yard freestyle off of guys that specialize solely in freestyle. Insane, insane. Yeah. Listen, if you ever want to be a uh, millionaire swimmer, do it the year before your home country has is hosting the Olympics. Mm. <laughs> I mean, he's hitting his stride at exactly the right time. Reminds me very, very much of like a young Ian Thorpe coming into the Sydney Olympics in 2000. Just the momentum that he was building into that and the hype. I mean, if if... If Paris or France itself is a, is a swimming nation, and, and Paris is the is the city of swimming here next year, this is um, mate, he's hit it at the right time, hasn't he? Absolutely, he's going to be the face of of France in a year's time. He's going to be on billboards. He's going to be in TV commercials. He's he's going to take over. And I don't know, like th th there will have to be a debate at one point of what events he tries to swim at the Olympics and what he's got the possibility of winning. But you know, already it begs to ask the question, why is the 400 free and the 400 IM so poorly matched on the schedule? Because this is clearly a guy that could probably try his hand at both of them events, right? Mm, yeah. Well, here's another question too. Does he does he redshirt next year? Does he take the infamous redshirt, you know, and sit out the NCAA season next year? Or does he use it to to race like he is right now? That's, a, that's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, the good thing about a year like this where he's been so successful is we're going to see how he does when it gets to World Championships this year. And if he's good at World Championships, which I don't doubt for a second he will be good at World Championships this year, why change a winning formula? You know, if it works this year, what, why, why mess with it next year? You know, mm. like you change a you change a a measure and something different happens and maybe he's worse, you know, so... I, I, I think just keep rolling with what's working and I, I wouldn't redshirt next year, but if he if he wants to and Bob thinks it's a good idea and he thinks it's a good idea, I'm also not going to question what they think is good. So, Yeah, well, maybe we'll get him on the show one of these days. We'll try and track him down. I've asked him a couple of times and he's, he's holding off for now, but uh, we'll get him on. We'll pull him in, see what happens. But listen, um, what else is going on in the world of swimming? A lot of action kind of this week, hasn't there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, if you don't already do it, get on Swim Spam. You're going to get a little newsletter on Monday morning, which, you know, Nate and they do a great job just getting all the important stuff to you on a Monday morning, all the results from all over the world. Um, I've just put it in the description. So if you want to sign up to Swim Spam, there we go. Just this link here, um, Swim Spam. It's great. And we can see a couple of like of the, uh, the titles there. But uh, there were some big things. I mean, I, I want to quickly touch on this one. Marcus Formeyer testing positive for uh, Ligandrol, which is the same uh, SARMs substance that Shana Jack was uh, 
was mm. was tested positive for. I think Shana said she got it from kissing her boyfriend who used it, and Marcus <laughs> Formeyer has said he got it from sharing his his gym partner's water bottle. So mm. that's how I, got I mean. It. I, I love it. I love the excuses. And it's like if I was going to the gym of Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, I wouldn't use any of his substances because, you know, he's probably taken something in the prime or Chris Brumstead or whatever. Like, come on, just just the excuses are poor. And the, the, the ban of one year is just not good enough. But, yeah, I just thought that was quite a funny thing. Not funny for the sport, but funny that that's how people think they can get away with stuff. What does it actually? I don't even know what it does. I mean, some of this stuff, I don't. I have no clue. I'm like, why would you even take it? Like, what are you? What are you taking it for? If if he's taking it willingly and knowingly, yeah. and he's not kissing his boyfriend or um, drinking out of his bottle, why is he taking it then? You know, like, what's it? What's it doing for him? But um, yeah, I don't know. Strange. Yeah, uh, it's, I think it's sad in the sport, and it's it's also sad when uh, you know the governing bodies don't do the right things to make sure it doesn't happen. But anyway, more positive things. Mm. I, I think of all the swimming that happened this weekend, one that I think really stood out to me was in Greece, a young 17-year-old lad popping off a uh, 156 long course 200 backstroke, threatening Apostolos' uh, Greek record. And I, I'd never heard of this lad. I don't know if you'd heard of this lad, but uh, that's a frighteningly fast time. Mm. No, I haven't heard of him. I, I haven't heard of many youngsters these days unless they're, uh, you know, breaking world records. But, um, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just not in the, in the game like that. But uh, when you see someone like this pop a time, certainly uh, piques your interest. Uh, was, was, there any, was there anyone from Indiana on the pool deck? <laughs> Ray Lewis caught a last-minute flight and he's already scouted this guy. You know, he's going, yeah. Um, but I don't know, like, Greece randomly have some really good backstrokers. Like they have the guy of Postlos going 52 lows, and it's kind of weird how it happens, isn't it? You know, one guy sort of paves the way, and then there is like a little uprising of mm. talent in in that event in a country like Greece, which is maybe not a major player in 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 the swimming world. Um, it's really good to see some some big performances coming from from them, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's good to see young talent coming through and. Hopefully they can hang on to him and he doesn't get pulled away into the U.S. system. But I'm sure there's going to be coaches all over him if he's yep. young and he's popping times like that already. Um, Adam Peaty's back, I see. Yep, yep. So, uh, well, they're in, where, whereabouts in Australia are they, uh, the GB guys on camp? They're wherever Kyle Chalmers is. So is that Adelaide? Well, Kyle Chalmers lives in Adelaide, but I know the Australian swim team right now are in camp as well. They have um, okay. these. They, they have these select camps where they invite – you know, the best athletes uh, around the country to come in. And I know I know the Aussies were in camp uh, themselves. So Char Chalmers was in camp with all the other Aussies. I know uh, it was it was interesting because um, he's, he was in camp with Cody Simpson. So uh, I don't know if they were roommates at all, but they're definitely on camp together. So, yeah, I like to, like to get the low down there. But, yeah, that, uh, I don't know. A lot of – well, it's summertime in Australia. So everyone's going down there and soaking up the sun and uh, and getting the training in, you know. Well, I think wherever they're on camp, that's where the, the GB guys, the uh, the Loughborough mm. lot are on camp with mm. with Mel and a few of the other swimmers. And they've, I guess they entered a, a local meet. Um, and Adam Peaty went 59.5, which is only like 0.3 off what he saw in the Commonwealth final. So, I mean, that mm. bodes well for him being back towards his better ways. Um, still a while off his PB, but I mean, I mean I'm sure he's going to get faster and faster all year like usual. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of other swims. I think Tom Dean went a 146-1 for the 200 freestyle, which is becoming more and more ordinary, I guess. Um, you know, 146s. Um, but yeah, there was also yeah. some swimming in Germany. Um, it was the, the Bundesliga, uh, which is like the German team nationals. And I, I find it crazy. They must have some money or there must be prize money involved because these German teams scouted ridiculously. Like... You know, Coleman Stewart was on one team, but the amount of just international swimmers on these German teams was crazy. I mean, oh. Chad swims with Frankfurt, but they brought in the Frankfurt team, brought in Cregor, Susanna Jakobos, two or three other big names. And I, I just, every team had like some German swimmers, some Dutch swimmers, some British, all the there's a few British guys over there swimming for mm. teams, like, uh, but it was overall pretty slow. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, like I said, like I said last week, I know they do that in in Brazil. That you know they they bring them down for the club competition. So maybe the club competition in Germany is heating up, and they're they're trying to trying to get that thing going, pay a few athletes to come in. So, yeah. <coughs> bless, bless you, jeez, Brett, take it easy, mate. Um, okay, well that's good, interesting. What what about some other kind of heavy news on the swimming side on on the American side of things with the the Terry McKeever news where she was actually fired by Cal this week. Um, that that seems to have come to a close, but massive investigation into kind of uh, bullying and and some other things at, at Cal. So uh, kind of a sad, sad ending to, you know, very, very sad story, but also um, sad ending to a, a pretty illustrious career, right? Yeah, I, it's... I think we're living in a world that's getting more and more sensitive to certain behaviors. And there's definitely like a change in the way you can act on pool decks or maybe mm. what you could. And there, there's something to be said about ways of motivating and, and, and working hard. But there's also stuff that just can't fly. I don't know, Terry. I've never, never met Terry. And, you know, I'm sure for every, 10 swimmers that say she was the best coach they could have asked for. There's one swimmer that maybe was offended by her. I, I did read the reports and, and, and some of the stuff that was said back when it was all announced. And some of it was pretty, you know, not okay, but I'm sure there's two sides to the story. And I mean, I, that's, that's all I can say really, you know? Was yeah. I think the way Terry? I look at it is like Terry probably hung on a little bit too long and didn't make enough change in the way she was coaching. Like, look, she's been at Cal, you know, 30 something years. Right. So in that time, swimming has evolved. Coaching has changed the way that you interact. And, and it was a man's world back then. She's right. Like some of her argument was like, well, the men, the men were doing this men get away with this. And I think in, in some respects, um, you know, the, the hardness of coaching was, was very male dominated at that point in time. And I think there was a way that they coached and for sure, um, you know, a lot of those male coaches that were looked at as maybe coaching that way have, have all moved on. And, and I mm -hmm. think Terry was probably, um, uh, you know, coaching very similar in, in some respects, you know, saying maybe some hard stuff. And just didn't evolve with the times and, and hung on too long and then ended up, you know, getting to a point where, you know, that would that would maybe motivate some people, I don't know, and then it wouldn't motivate other people, you yeah. know, for sure it would highly offend them. And and then to the extent of what they're saying, she said, like, yeah, I, I guess that's, you know, going above and beyond what is, is the norms, you know. So, look, just a sad, sad ending to a very um, kind of illustrious career, like yeah. I said. I mean, she's... She's the, the winningest female coach in history. She's been Olympic head coach for the female side. She's coached Olympic champions. I mean, you know, in terms of, in terms of the performances uh, that she's produced, you know, she had a massive impact in that respect as well. So mm -hmm. it, it's hard to say, it's hard to take away from the things that, you know, these, these women went through. And then on the other side, you know, the kind of, um, relationship that some of these other women had with us i don't know it's just it ended it's done and i think cal's moved on i think we're going to get to a point where david marsh will probably be, be uh named the head women's coach after this this season i think you know he's he's kind of there i think dave durden is, is uh looking after both the men and women i don't know if that continues maybe it does maybe dave yeah. stays with the men and women and and dave marsh stays on as an assistant or they split it who knows where it's going to go, but that's kind of it's in their hands right now, and we'll see how they do this season, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, Cal will continue being successful, and they've, they've got great coaches in that program that can handle the load of all, all the guys there. So, fortunately, I think they're going to be all right, and the, the, the girls on the team should be well looked after, which is what needs to happen. Yeah, for those that don't know, how many events is he going to swim in NCAAs? You're only allowed to swim three events, so he has to pick the three that is most effective for his team, not even necessarily the ones that he could win. You know, it's it's where the team needs him, the gaps. I mean, obviously, he just pumped out a 100 backstroke. It was pretty impressive. He went a 500 free, so we may even be seeing Leon uh, swim some events in NCAAs that 
you wouldn't necessarily think would be his top choices. But uh, who knows? You know, I guess at this stage he can swim whatever he wants. Um, I, I pr pretty much put on without a doubt that he's going to swim the, the 400 I am at NCAAs. There's no doubt about that. And that, I believe, uh, falls on the the Friday. So, so what they do now is they swim the Wednesday night, they swim the 800 free relay. So he'll be on that. And then they go into the next full day of Thursday. So that's Wednesday night is the relay. Thursday is the full day. So you've got the, the 200 IM, I'd imagine. He'd swim on that day. <laughs> yeah, 150 free. He's not going to do that. And then um, the next day, he's got the 400 IM. And then the last day, oh, you know what it, You know what else is on that 200 IM day is that 500 free. So he's got the five yeah. free and the two IM. So he'd have to choose between those two events. And depending on what his team needs, he may, he may end up swimming the 500 free, you know. And then he definitely going to swim the 4 a.m. But, you know, that the 100 back is on the 4 a.m. day as well. So he, he could double up that day. Uh, you know, the last day you got the 200 breast. You got the, the 200 fly. Um, you got a, a 200 back. I mean, so, yeah, he's, he's got some events there on that day too. So, I mean, he's a world medalist in the two fly. So, you know, yeah. he could probably even throw his, yeah. throw his hand at the two fly. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. Good, good topic of conversation. I guess what what we'll see probably is, um, you know, he's going to swim at the Pac 12s before this, so we might get a glimpse of maybe his event lineup there. Who knows? But uh, he's just so versatile. But good question there. I like this. Um, so other than other than those things, was there any other big news that came through? Uh, you know, before we go into our question and answer here, so I think we've covered the uh, the main stuff. I mean, there was there was some fast women swimming as well. Um, probably shouldn't forget that. Uh, Amy Canny, South African girl, went the second fastest 200 freestyler in the country. Uh, Kate Douglas went a 200 breaststroke NCAA record, 201.4. So that's uh, frighteningly quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gretchen Walsh swam a PB in a 200 freestyle, known for a sprinting, but she swam her first 200 free PB in three years. Mm. Um, mainly just UVA girls swimming really fast, actually. Um there was some fast – the Texas girls have been swimming really fast. There's a little cohort of, you know, Lydia, Lydia Jacoby, Kelly Pash, Anna Ellen, uh, the girl – I forgot her name, Dakota Lufa. So, yeah, Texas are swimming really well as well. So, yeah, it's been yeah. some fast women swimming. We talk about guys, but talk about the women as well. Um, it's been some really good women swimming as well. <clears throat> yeah, now <clears> – Nate <throat> just put something through to us. This uh, French backstroker fractured his elbow – December 27th in a skiing accident. That's never a good thing. What's his Yes, Johan. Yo Johan Ndui. Um, he's a, he's yeah. a really nice guy and he's, he's recovering from that. He's, he's kicking and doing pr like dry land and stuff and he's, he's doing, doing, doing the most he can. And guys, do put questions over in the chat bit because we will go through all the questions at one point. So uh, do ask questions. We're, we're going to go to that in a second. Uh, let's go to this one real quick. Do you offer swim clinics? Would be great if athletes could possibly, uh, their coaches could learn from you and their athletes. I mean, you guys can learn from me anytime you want. And Sonny, over at any question, we're over on any question all the time, answering questions. Uh, I've got I've got basically eight hundred answers on that platform of me talking about everything. Sonny's got over a thousand answers on there. Go on there and and hit us up on any question. That's where you need to be. Um, many other athletes bob bowman's over there so like you can get all the best you don't need you don't need a swim clinic necessarily but no i don't offer swim clinics anymore i know that if you want to come to america and do a swim clinic you can do one through fitter and faster swim clinics uh you can find them on the website but no no swim clinics for me anymore just i just talk about swimming yeah what else we got here uh oh he's swimming okay there we go ben tate nice Okay. Yeah, guys, let, let us know how you've swum. If you've raced this weekend, we're uh, we're all into every swimming. So tell us about your swimming. What about Joe Litchfield, eh? Joe's Joe's rapid. Joe's got some of the best underwaters in the world, and it doesn't surprise me that he's uh, he's pretty good yards. I think a college program would have absolutely loved to have Joe on their team. Why didn't he take it up? What happened? He's at, he's at the National Centre in the UK, and he's, he's doing well. Um Jamie's over at Lisbon this weekend. Nice. All right, Every Jamie. Every Lisbon this weekend. Yeah. Uh, will Arizona beat Cal? Will Arizona? 
I don't know. If, I, I think you mean Arizona State. Will Arizona State beat Cal? Yeah. Uh, the answer to that is no. I don't think they'll beat Cal overall. I think they have uh, events that they'll certainly win. They may even win a couple of relays. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't think they have the team to beat Cal. Um, but they've certainly got a number one swimmer in the world. That always helps, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Do you think – what's well, this one? Adam Petey could possibly do a 200 really good. No, he's too big. He's jacked. Have you seen him? He was posting some photos or videos of him uh, doing some pull-ups. He, he looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's massive. There's no way he could get through a 200. I don't think he wants to. He wants to rip a good 50 hundred. He, he uh, has been 208 long course, just to clarify. He has been pretty has world he? class. This is about five years ago. I think it was 2018. He actually made their team and then didn't swim it at Worlds or whatever or did badly. But he has been a 208 long course, which at the time was within a, a second of the world record. Now it's at, well, the world record's 205 and. 208 nowhere near as elite as it was back when he swam it. But, you know, he's good. But, yeah, I don't think he cares about that anymore. And I don't think that's the direction he's going in. Yeah. Hey, Timon had a good uh, race on the weekend. Won the 100 fly at the uh, county champs. Were you there, son? I'm I'm in Devon. So, Cornwall's the next county south from me. So, uh, I was at the Devon county champs. But uh... we, I, actually, I actually coach at the same pool that Timon trains at with his club tonight. So, I'll, I'll see him. And he's actually he's going to get one of these bad boys that I'm now selling. Go. There you go, Timon. He's picking one of these up from me. A swimsuit guy cap. Nice. There well, we Timon, let's get that up on uh, let's get that up on Instagram, eh? Get you. If you want to buy one of them? They're now for sale. Where where can they buy those? On my website, www.theswimsuitguy.co.uk. There um, we go. Selling caps. Nice. Uh, the Stockholm Swim Open in April. Yeah, we'll check it out. You know, if it's online, Coach Fritz, we're not going to be out there, but we'll check it out. We'll see what's going on. Talk about any swims that happen. That's kind of what we do, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. It looks like lot, Lisbon. Lot, yeah, a lot meet. of talk about this one, eh? A lot of talk about the Arena Lisbon meet. Uh, Diogo and Moresi going to be out there. That'll be good. What um, else we got? We're getting a lot of questions. I like this. This is a little bit about uh, biceps and triceps here. What's going on here? Just for the sake of uh, having a wider surface of area pull during the arm, whether or not these muscles... Uh, so biceps and triceps, no, like, look, you don't you don't need big biceps and triceps. I think what you need is uh, you need them to be strong and you need them to um, be uh, ha have that endurance in them so that they can hold the water for longer periods. So it's not a matter of just pulling once really hard. It's a matter of holding water throughout the whole race and having those muscles work effectively. So you uh, there's no there's no better workout than a swim workout for for swimming fast so swimming is the number one thing you can do then you get in the gym and you uh increase strength and endurance in in your in your gym workouts but certainly not looking for hypertrophy where you're looking for size you're just looking for strength and endurance in those muscles for sure this guy jonathan knows what's going on look he's uh he's back swimming at 32 and look at who his coach is mr brett hawk and any question, he's, um, using the, he's using all that information that's there, you know, like the amount of good stuff that people like you, James Gibson, are putting out about 50 freestyle, sprint freestyle. It's like the ultimate place to be. And I'm pretty sure it's a free resource as of now, right? Free, completely free. Get on there and get your free resource. We're over there. But uh, Jonathan, cheers to you, my friend. Appreciate yeah, that. Keep, keep us updated. We're, we're seeing a 25 point soon, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's coming. It's coming. Um, what's happening in Germany? So that German was, that was Bundesliga. That was what we mentioned <laughs> earlier. Um, All right, yeah. There was nothing particularly fast there. I mean, I'm sure it's a lot of racing and it's good fun. Good. I saw some good atmosphere videos, but I didn't see a single swim where I was like, "Well, that's really fast." So, you know, Chad won the 200 backstroke. I think you know, Coleman went PB plus three or world record plus three on the 100 backstroke. It's it was short course. It was pretty slow, and I don't think it's really about. Uh, you know, swimming fast. It's just a team competition and getting points and whatever. Here's a good question <clears throat> on uh, proper wrist flexion for underwater phase of a straight arm freestyle. I'm going to go, go full screen on this one for us. 
Okay, so I always told my athletes, you want a firm wrist. Okay, so so as you come in, you you want to you want to flex on the water. So you want to hold the water, but you don't want to bend at the wrist, and you certainly don't want to let go of the wrist. Okay, so if you if you let go, the water's going to slide. If you if you bend here, all right, it's just going to scoop. So what you want to have is you want to have a firm, straight wrist, but then a slight, just a slight flexion on the fingers so you can catch the water here. Okay, so you, you catch it and then you hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it all the way through. So keeping that wrist firm is essential right there. Okay. Best I could do there, uh, given the circumstances. Very That's very good. Look at that, getting uh, getting coaching on here as well. Uh, yeah. I have two kid athletes that are getting ready for Texas State Champs. We play your and swimsuit guy videos often. Thanks for the content. Well, I'm glad we're helping. Um, and all the best to your two kids. I hope they're yeah. some great estates. That's awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chad went 155 short course 200 backstroke. I saw Sonny on Twitter recently say that Dressel might be the GOAT. What is the argument for him as the GOAT? Is he sprinter GOAT? I think I actually said he's the most athletic person we've ever had swim and be a competitive swimmer. And I think there's a solid argument. I'm sure there's been a few other very athletic guys um, over the years, but he's definitely up there with just pure athletic humans we've ever had in the sport. I don't know of your thoughts on that, Brett. Yeah, uh, look, there's a lot of arguments for who the, the sprinter goat is. And, uh, you know, you could go with Popoff, first of all, who mm -hmm. won back-to-back -back Olympics in both the 50 and the 100 freestyle. You could go with... Gary Holt Jr., who won back-to-back -back Olympics and, and a silver medal before that in the 53. So he went silver, gold, gold. You could go with Anthony Urban, who won uh, gold 16 years apart. Um, you could go with Cesar Cielo, who won gold in the Olympics, and then uh, he won three world championships in a row. And he's um, the fastest ever. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he's got the world record, you know, so... A uh, lot of arguments out there for the GOAT. And then, and then there's Dressel, obviously, in the conversation, who's now, you know, this the latest guy who's come through. And like you said, probably the most athletic swimmer in history. Um, but, you know, he's at the he's at the midpoint of his career. So there's no point in calling him the GOAT compared to guys that have gone through. And then, look, uh, I didn't even mention uh, Peter van den Hugenbaan, who won back-to-back -back Olympics in the – in the 100 free and first man to go under 48. I mean, come on. So there's a lot of guys in the conversation there. Uh, you got Matt Biondi before that. You got Tom Jager, you know, two legends of the sport. So a lot of guys in the conversation. Uh, I'm not in it. Uh, I'm just I'm just uh, having the conversation. <laughs> um, raced a lot of those guys, maybe coached a couple of them. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, re really interesting guys. But I, I don't know if there's a goat just yet, you know. What else yeah. we got here? Just going down. The Arena League is like the National Team League in the in the UK, for those who don't know. Uh, unfortunately, it has zero financial sort of situation. So it doesn't have the attraction of the top athletes in the country. And, you know, it's a fun meet. It's one of my favorite meets growing up to be at the national final. I loved it, but it's not a particularly fast meet in terms of senior swimmers, unfortunately. Um, uh, what about this one? Do you have any specific exercise to improve ankle flexibility? A lot of a lot of breaststrokers that I knew used to kind of just sit on their ankles. Turned out, you know, you turn your ankles out and you kind of sit on them, and um, you know that that takes time to get to that point uh, of, of flexion. But uh, a lot of them would do that. Any anything else, Sonny? I was going to say sit on the ankles. It's pretty uh, pretty simple, but it works, I guess. Sit on your ankles when you watch TV. Sit on your ankles before training. You know, just find time for it. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I was, um, would, would stretch out in the shower when the when the hot water's on it. You know, let the let the let the blood flow down there and kind of um, stretch them out in the shower. Um, other people would come in a little bit early and do some warm up exercises. You know, so that their where feet are in the right position once they got into the pool. So. Yeah, just you gotta you gotta be um, consistent with that type of work. That's really what it comes down to. It's not a matter of stretching once and thinking, "Why aren't my ankles where I want them to be?" That takes uh, months to kind of get them into the position, and then you gotta keep working to keep them there. So, oh, here's stuff. one for you. Here's one for you, Brett. You can go full screen for this one. Come on. What is the best way to 
make sure you engage the lats during the pull phase during freestyle instead of using your rear delts. Uh, okay, well, I'll give you, I'll give you um, something that I always told my athletes is, you know, a lot of times when, when you're pulling, you want to you wanna, um, kind of clench here, up here right, in the neck region, right? The, these are the traps, you know? So what I would always say to my athletes is, is release the traps, okay? So as you come through, you're relaxed in the trap, and then as you, as you pull, okay, you're engaging underneath your arm and not at the top of your shoulder here. So a lot of people will grab here and not engage here, and I say relax here and engage under here. So now the water is being held under here instead of grabbing onto the water from the top all right so it's not a it's not a strength and power movement in the sense of like grabbing and snatching and a lot of that has to do with your traps so release your traps engage your lats uh and i think that's the best way forward for um for doing that there we go is that helpful there we go a uh, quick one. Do we think sub two minutes, 200 breasts this year? Not this year because there's no short course world champs, but it will happen soon. So, yeah. I think that they're, they're talking. Are they talking long course? Short course. Say oh, some two double oh. All right. Short course. Right. Yeah, it will happen. There's probably a lot of super athletic guys out there with no real swimming background, but enough fast twitch fibers to make great sprinters. That argument can be made about any sport and any athlete. There's probably someone out there who could be the best at a sport, but doesn't do that sport. But to be good at a sport, you've got to really love it and live it. And if you're not interested in swimming, you're never going to be a good enough sprinter because you've got to live it and love it. And, you know, that's why they probably do another sport or they don't do a sport at all. But yeah, there's absolutely people out there, right? Yeah, I bet you there's some basketball players that we've lost, you know. Um, you know, Tim Duncan used to be a swimmer. Did you know that? I did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Swam, swam for the Bahamas. Um, yeah, we lost him to, you know, he went on to make billions of dollars in basketball, <laughs> so I understand why we lost him. Um, Jaeger was doing race prep stuff in the 90s. Yeah, he was, he was a freak. Dylan Carter. <laughs> Dylan Carter what? I love it. What a statement. Just Dylan Carter. Yeah, Dylan's fair great. <laughs> yeah. Dylan. Love Dylan. What else we got here? Thank you for answering these questions. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll get into them. We'll keep going. We'll see what we got. What else we got? Here's a fun one. Number one draft pick for an ISL team. Long course. Who are you picking? Uh, Leon Marchand. <laughs> it's so obvious. Like, of course you take... Like Leon can relay, Leon can do every event, he can fill holes. Um, absolutely, Leon Marchand, yeah, um, yeah taking him all day long. And, and and women, I'd say Kate Douglas, yeah, Kate Douglas. God, she can do everything, can't she? There, yeah. There's a lot of parallels between them two swimmers, actually, in terms of just ridiculous versatility. Yeah, what about this one, Thomas Chacon could contend. The 200 IM, he posted 102 breast, 200 free. He's a rapid flying back. I don't know. Can he put it all together? That's the question. I mean, he's another low-key, probably a good idea for that draft as well, someone like a Tom Chacon. But he's he won Worlds for the 100 IM. So, you know, he can do all four strokes. He uh, is the world record holder, 100 back long course. Probably the most underrated world record last year, that 51-6, breaking Murphy's record, you know. It was maybe overshadowed by Milak and, and Popovich, but he's still young. 200 freestyle, 146. Yeah, like definitely has the, the pieces. It's whether or not that's, that, that's the event he wants to sort of go after. Maybe he wants to stick with 100, 200 backstroke. Mate. Uh, you know, that, that's for him and his coach, but definitely has the ability, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is this me writing stuff? No, this it's is you. Nate. Yeah. This is Nate. <laughs> Nate putting this in. Search Tim Duncan swimming. Epic blog post. Yep, there we go. That was him swimming. Uh, There's a few Eddie other mentions Hall. of some some great athletes. Eddie Hall, another another world champion, world's strongest man. He was a national champion in the 1500 freestyle back when he was 14. So mm. there's a fun fact for you. I think his PB was like 16 something at 14 long course, 1640 or something. He was a 2450 freestyler long course a couple of years after that. So uh, yeah. He went on to, again, bigger and better things with Strongman. 
and is yeah the first guy to deadlift 500 kilos which is really <laughs> bloody cool um no what about the what about that uh, British guy who used to be a diver who's like famous for movies now? What's his name? Jason Statham was yeah, a Commonwealth Jason. diver. Yeah, he was yeah. a Commonwealth Games diver for England, and then mm. now he's obviously one of the biggest action movie stars of all time. Yeah. Transporter. I love Jason Statham. He mm. kind of he kind of looks like my dad, who also looks like Brett. So maybe Brett is Jason mm. Statham. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, a little bit like him. yeah. This is a good topic, actually. I like this. Let's play this game. Who used to swim? Do it. <laughs> Do, so I don't know. I'm not aware of Chris Humphreys. Do we know? He's a basketball player. I think He's he was dating uh, one of the Kard Kardashians early on. Obviously, we have, uh, again, your good friend who's a, a comedy star. Um, no, what's his name? You had him on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Workaholics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you put me on the spot, mate. But uh, I know. Yeah. I can't remember his... <sighs> Feel bad now for uh yeah you threw it at me it's too early in the morning i'm drinking coffee mate and anders anders there anders we go anders home yeah anders home, anders yeah. home. Yeah, yeah yeah um yeah he's uh he, he's he was a, he was a college swimmer and now he's big deal um yeah some definitely some guys out there there you go What's Jay, oh, when is sunny going to race again no time soon um <laughs> sunny's just going to the gym uh just a gym gym rat these days. Yeah, Good on him. Yeah. How's the biceps coming along, by the way? Are they still in? Oh, they're not. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, a little definition okay. there. Okay. Okay. I'm leaning up. I'm leaning up. I'm going to get some abs yeah. coming through again soon. Yeah. I like that. Here's one. Jordan Crooks' free diving background reminds him of Tom Shields' background in surfing. I mean, being, being good for water is not a bad thing, right? Yeah, will anyone ever break um, Thorpe's 400 suitless? I mean, this is kind of a silly question because people aren't racing in briefs these days. So I don't like, when is someone going to go 341 wearing briefs? Never. Oh, is that what we're talking about? Like he did that in a brief? Was that like 97 or something? I think so, 97 or 99, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's kind of an, a, a stupid answer. People have gone quicker than it in jammers which is as close as you're ever going to get to it. Mm. So, mm. I don't know. I, I, I still think he's... <laughs> she, there's Jason Statham in the comments. Jason, he's here. He's alive. <laughs> he's everywhere. He's everywhere, that man. Uh, Kyrie Irving, Trey, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Kyrie mm. Irving was a swimmer? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you going to swim masters with your dad? Is that what's going on? Only if I have you and my dad on the relay team with me, I'll do it. Mate, I don't swim. You got you got to know that I don't swim. My dad plays golf. He doesn't swim either. He doesn't. Maybe I'll oh, splash then. He, he dabbles. He dabbles. <laughs> uh, we're running out of questions here, so this could be this could be the end. Um, Sun Yang, the best swimmer in the world at some point, was he? Uh, yeah, he, when he was juiced up, of course he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah he was he was awesome he was killing it yeah uh, i think that's that's been proven hasn't it i'm not even just making something up there that's that's a fact but um yeah. if he wasn't yeah. then you'd still be swimming he'd be competing right now not serving a ban unfortunately for him uh has he still got the eight-year ban or did it get reduced <sighs> I don't even know. I, I don't I'm know. sure it went up being reduced in some way, but I mean, hopefully he just doesn't ever come back because he's toxic for the sport and not needed. I don't know if I ever told you, but I was, uh, I was on the pool deck at the world championships where he got into a fight with a Brazilian swimmer. Did you, did you know that? I, I remember that. Yeah. The altercation in the warm up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was standing on the pool deck next to the, next to the uh, coach of the female swimmer and Sun Yang's like, grabbing grabbing her foot grabbing her foot as they're swimming in warm-up and she turned around and just smacked him in the head and then he starts going at her and then the coach grabbed a, a pool boy and just threw it at sun yang it was, it was all happening and i'm just standing there like wow this is awesome what's going on i, I wish that was caught on film <laughs> yeah so do I. I wish i had the camera on at that point in time but i was right there it was it was wild loved that's, it oh that's insane like it's just 
bizarre. Every story I've heard about him is just bizarre. I, I, I loved it when Duncan Scott's wagging his finger on the podium and all that. Like, Sumin mm. needs more of that, to be fair. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll get a little bit this this year, you know. Right. I don't know. Two more questions, then we'll call it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm 14, six foot three. How tall is too, is too tall for breaststroke? I know oh, wow. Pete is tall, but there, there are a lot of small breaststrokers. Reese Whitley is like 6'10", right? Uh, he's a big unit. Uh, and then your your boys, um, you know, your your foreign boys, what's their names? The ones that swam for, for you are the breaststrokers? Uh, uh, for Not Shimanovich. What's his name? Oh, yeah, Ilya Shimanovich is like 6'5", yeah. right? He's yeah, yeah. Shim yeah, Shimanovich is a big boy, right? Yeah, he's... He just work with what you've got. You know, if you're tall, you're, you're in a positive place, right? So you're, you're doing well, you know? Um, what about that? We got, we got ourselves a super sticker. Oh, hey, whose who's channel was it on though? Me or yours? One of us <laughs> Mate, got it. 10 bucks, <laughs> baby. Let's go. Lunch is on me. Uh, Yolders. Thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah. That. That's the first yeah. time we got one of those. Yeah. It was unnecessary, but thank you. You know, uh, you can go out and buy a nice coffee now. I appreciate that. Who's the who's the goat? The breaststroke, kid of Jima or Petey? Uh, Petey's Petey's still swimming. So again, I don't think we can call anyone who's still swimming the goat just yet, you know. But um, obviously, he's probably a, f a pretty strong candidate for the position. But um, you know, once his career is over, we can kind of argue that, you know, see where he goes at the end. But kid of Jima was uh, the best of his time, and yeah. kid of Jima changed the shape of breaststroke. You know, the way that the way that it was done and. And uh, I mean, uh, anyone that comes along like that has has an influence. But Kitajima was certainly one of those, um, you know, shifters. He, he made people think differently. He made people swim differently. He put pressure on people. I mean, Kitajima is not not a big kid, but man, he was uh, technically perfect. A lot of people say, you know. Yep. So, yeah, legend, legend. What's this one? Last one. Uh, isn't swimming a fifth year? So this is her last year. Well, uh, she's not swimming a fifth year. I wonder why. Okay. Well, I mean, she doesn't. She doesn't. Oh, well, look. This is her, this will be her last year. Then she'll probably yeah. Then she'll not redshirt, but she'll be done. And then she'll go yeah you know, have a year off for the Olympics, and then and then call it a day. Maybe I don't know. But um, what a talent. You know, just good. Glad we got another couple of seasons left watching her swim because she is a superb talent. Yeah. No doubt about it. Absolutely. Cool. All right, mate. I think that's it. That was good yeah. stuff. We're gonna we're gonna just keep getting questions, if not, and we'll go on forever and ever. Um, yeah, I gotta right, get to work next week. Come back next week, and we'll do the same thing. We'll answer questions for half an hour. So uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then next week, tell us more famous people that swam. We need we need yes. we need research on famous people that used to be swimmers. We'll get some uh, people up in the comments. That'd be awesome. Uh, and we'll yep. save this one, which is an important one. We'll save that for next week. Okay? Yes. Let's John, save that. John, oh, thanks. Join us next week, John, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that first. All right, guys. Take care. We're out. Bye. Thanks, guys. Doo -doo.